Hi everyone, welcome back. This year I'm bringing back my favorites videos. I don't know why I ever stopped. I think I started doing my roundup videos and that kind of took that place which makes no sense because there's so many things that I love in my day-to-day -day life that I feel like I need to share with you. So they're coming back. I don't know if I'll film them monthly. I'm thinking maybe bi-monthly or whenever I have a good list of things I feel like I really need to talk to you guys about. So I hope you're as excited as I am. So before we get into all of the things that I've been loving in January and February, I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get started. This has been a favorite for the last year. I purchased it last March and it has become my emotional support handheld vacuum. This is the Bissell, I don't know what, oh, right here. Power Clean Pet, and I love it. It comes with three attachments. One, the skinny little nozzle, which can get into really small nooks and crannies. This one here, which I love for my stairs, or whatever purpose, like there's so many things you can use that for. And this powered one, which has like a little beater bar in it, and it, picks up every little piece of cat hair on any surface. I use this for so many different things. Um, I honestly carry it around my house wherever I'm at. Like I'll use it for my couches, my mattress, my mattress cover, or like even my duvet where my cats chill out. I'll do my kitty cat condos. And whenever I do my hair, I just vacuum the floor real quick to pick up any shedding I've lost. <laughs> and for bugs. This has been a lifesaver. I had a very like almost traumatic moment with a grasshopper in my house last year. I discovered I'm super scared of grasshoppers if they're inside my house. Fine if they're outside. I used to play with them as a kid all the time. Like they're chilling. But inside my house, this little one, I, I saw it as the scary grasshopper in a bug's life. It was horrifying to me. It kept jumping right at me and my cats were like trying to eat it. This thing saved my life. I would say I get 25-ish minutes of continuous runtime, which is a lot, especially if you're just doing little surfaces. It does take a while to charge, but I think that's because it's so powerful. I just plug it in at night and it's good to go in the morning. Next up on my list are these cute cups. They're little bubble cups and it's a proven fact. The cuter the cup, the better your drink tastes, even if it's just water. It's just science. But these are so freaking cute. They look amazing on my open shelf in my kitchen, um, which I do have a video on my whole renovation. Uh, you'll understand why it's taken me so long to talk about it. Once that comes out, I'm scripting it out right now and it's like, yeah. But just as a little teaser to that video on why it's taken me so long to get my ass to do it. One of the workers peed in a bathroom that was being renovated without a door, without a floor, without the toilet attached. It was in fact away from the wall, obviously not in use. He peed in it and it leaked out on the floor, which didn't have a floor, it was plywood. Okay, so <laughs> horrible. Um, how did I get there from these cute little glassworks? Oh, because I said they look so cute, displayed in my kitchen. <laughs> But honestly, every little drink looks so cute in them. Also, if you're a little spilly, the bubbles make for great grip. I've never dropped one of these cups before. They're super, super cute when they have some stuff in it. And like every drink I have out of here tastes so good. I do have another thing I love to drink out of. It's my Awala water bottle. This is a 40 ounce one. Uh, I think the shade is marshmallow. I just liked how it was just plain. Some of the color combos are just not really my thing. I need it to mesh well and kind of disappear in my house because it's massive. I do have a Stanley. Both of them have a little sticker from Jamie Page Doodles. I love teddy bears, so. I've been drinking out of this thing for like a year and a half, but I decided to get the Walla because I got really sick of the Stanley not being able to stand anymore, you know? It would topple over all the time and spill, we all know that. And another thing that I just got really tired of is like I have so, much trouble trying to open this every time I want to fill it up. I think the Stanley is great, like in many, many ways. I do usually have this one in my car just because it fits in my car cup holder. I just leave it in my car if I'm having like an errand day or whatnot, but I prefer my Owala now. And I think this nozzle is genius. There's two options. You can either chug it like a normal water bottle like this, or this little part right here is a straw and you can just 
drink like that. And I have to give credit to my bestie, Sam. She got this like two years ago and she's like, I think it's gonna be like a thing in a couple years. Like this thing is actually awesome. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if I get it, but now I do. If you already have a refillable water bottle, you do not need another one. These are the only two that I have now. I have had like the Lululemons ones and a few other ones, but I had to get rid of them because I have such a weird thing with depth perception. I think it's due to my ADHD. So whenever I'd go to drink, I'd usually spill a little bit or I'd whack my tooth and that's why I chipped my tooth here. So I got rid of those ones. I can only drink from a straw. <laughs> and this is just the best of everything, you know? Next up, I have a drink. I've never been an energy drink person until I've tried this brand here, Alani New. Oh, so good. I've tried quite a few flavors, like the Kimades, a cherry one, breezeberry, Cosmic Stardust, Juicy Peach, and Cherry Twist. Cosmic Stardust is one of my favorites. It tastes like Skittles to me or like white freezies. I really like this one too because it tastes like red Sour Patch Kids a little bit if they're ice cold. This one has to be ice cold. If it's a little bit warm, it tastes like um, cough syrup a bit because of the cherry flavor. So this one's like not one of my absolute favorites, but I think my absolute is this one, Juicy Peach. It, it tastes exactly like the peach juice I had in Greece in 2015, but just fuzzy because of the bubbles and it's so good. And there's no like aspartame taste to it or there's not a lingering taste at all. Like they just taste like juice and they perk me right up. I've been loving them and I've been actually drinking one of these instead of a matcha. I highly recommend trying their brand even if you haven't been an energy drink person in the past. I do have some body favorites, fragrance and hair care things, but I have like one more random thing to include here and it's my new hobby which is crochet. I'm actually wearing my first crochet sweater right now. It's just like a little shrug and I think it looks cute with tank tops. I haven't sewn in all the ends yet. I was too excited to wear it. So that's what these little dangly guys are. Crochet has been such an amazing outlet for me because I have ADHD. I have to be doing something with my hands all the time. And when I'm watching TV, I used to go scroll on my phone all the time, which I really didn't like. But now instead of that, I crochet and I can actually really focus on what I'm watching on TV. And I got into crocheting around November. My mom learned again in September and I've just been seeing her create these beautiful things. And I was like, hey, I think I'd really like that. And I do, and I think this hobby is here to stay. I love crochet because you can do so many things with it. Like you can make sweaters, blankets, toys, stuffies, whatever. Like you can do so many things, bags, all of it. Um, so I think I love that variation of what you can do. And honestly, I cannot wait to make like baby blankets for my friends. Like it would be the greatest honor of my life if I make their baby blanket that they connect with and they have until it disintegrates, you know? Like I think that's the coolest thing. But I wanted to show you a few of the things I've made so far. So I first got really into making like these little stuffies and my groomies. I had a little teddy bear phase. I think they're so cute. I'm gifting this one to my dad tomorrow, finally. So cute with a little football. Um, this pink one was one of my first projects I've ever made. It's pretty good for my first ever project. And this was the last one I made. I think I'll do a few more, but I love this one. It's like a soft rainbow. And this yarn had little flecks, so it looks a little fuzzy. And the white in here was like super, super pearly. So it has a lot of dimension and he's so freaking cute. And I also love making these little Ghibli guys. <laughs> I love Miyazaki's movies. So I have a little Totoro. I made a little Wara Wara. This is a little guy from the newest movie, The Boy and the Heron. And I have a Soot Sprite from Spirited Away on a Swing. This is usually in my car. I've made a few of these, one for my bestie Sam and my niece Molly, because we all love those movies. But they're so cute. This one's so cute because I put these little star gems on them. Oh, makes me so happy. Uh, I also made this little water bottle accessory. It's usually hanging on my Awala or my Stanley but it carries my little calico critters that look like Ren and Lanny. <laughs> I'm just getting into wearables now. So I've made this sweater. I'm also making another one in just like this nice creamy color, the exact same pattern. I'll also link all the patterns below 
drew some cases here, crocheter. And then I made this laptop slip for my bestie, Danny. She was like, I need something for my laptop. My laptop's getting so scratched. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna make you this. <laughs> so I'm gifting that to her tomorrow too when I go to Calgary. It's so cute. It's like a little tulip stitch. And I wrapped it with yellow just to complement the pink. It's so cute. I was like, oh, I think I might have to keep this for myself. This is still a big work in progress, but I'm making a strawberry granny square blankie that has a checkered pattern. I think the colors look so cute. And then when I finish it, I think I'm gonna do like a scalloped pink edge, or I don't know what color yet, but a scalloped edge. It's gonna look so cute. Um, but this has been taking way longer than I thought it would. Each one of these squares takes me about 40 minutes and I have all these other projects I need to do. So this one's so this one's kind of like my big backup project that's going to be ongoing for a freaking long time. I also have these granny squares I've made. They're my first kind of granny squares. I really like the color story. I just kind of given up on what I want to do with these. I might make them a little bag, but just some cute granny squares. And I have another work in progress slash, I don't know if I'm going to continue sweater. <laughs> this is another kind of shruggy thing. I just, I don't know if it's really my style yet, but I, I'll see if when I finish it. And if I hate it, for me, I can give it to someone else or donate it or give it to one of you guys, <laughs> if you love it. <laughs> but those are some of the things I've crocheted so far. Let's talk about hair products. So I purchased a little mini of K18 like a year ago. I was way too scared to use it because it was so expensive and so little. I was like, I'm gonna run through that so quickly. So I was waiting till my hair was in dire need. And I have become a K-18 girly. This stuff is revolutionary for my hair. It's healed it in ways I didn't think was possible. So I have naturally very fine, thin, curly whirly hair. <laughs> I'll insert some pictures when I used to just wear my hair curly all the time. Maybe one day I'll take the extensions out and I'll wear my hair curly again, but that's not my era right now. But I've had extensions and I've been heat styling my hair for a very long time consistently. So that obviously does a number on my natural curls. But I have been using all of these products for three to four months. And I believe like last week, I let my hair just completely air dry because I was too tired to blow dry it. And my curls were back. My curls underneath here are always super curly and ringletty, but up here has been like straight and dead for a very long time. But when I let my hair air dry, these were all like turning into ringlets and I could not believe my eyes. And it's totally because I've been consistent in using all of these products. So I'll touch on the shampoos first. These are the two that I have. One of these have a new name or a new bottle. They kind of revamped it. I don't know which one it is at this certain moment, but I'll put it up on screen as well as in the description, of course. Um, but I use this Peptide Prep Detox Shampoo and this Peptide Prep pH Maintenance Shampoo. I wash my hair about twice a week and I use these once because I still use my Devoness shampoo and conditioner too. I don't always go in with the peptide serum and all that, but these are awesome. They make my hair feel so nice and clean. They're not heavy at all, so my hair doesn't get greasy quickly. I need to jump in. I feel like I confused myself and I need to clarify something. So I like to double cleanse my hair, so I'll wash my hair twice. Um, sometimes I'll use each one of these once or I'll just use one of them twice, if that makes any sense. I just kind of check in with my hair, see what it's needing more. Um, like if I've been using a lot of product and I feel like there's a lot of buildup on my scalp from like dry shampoo and such, I'll do two times with the detox. Or if I feel like I've had a lighter product week, I'll do twice with the pH or mix them up, you know? I like to have fun with it. So after you use these, you don't go in with any conditioner because you apply this afterwards. And this is the magic stuff. This is the K18 Leave-In Molecular Repair Hair Mask. So I take about four pumps of this because I do have these long extensions now and you wanna really rub your hands together until it thickens up and gets white. Then it feels like a really nice rich hair mask through your hair and it just spreads out evenly. But I know you can totally overuse this stuff so I use it every second week, I would say on average, yeah. And to finish off my style, one of my new favorite hair oils is the K18 one. This is molecular repair hair oil. I don't really love the smell of this but 
damn it works. It makes my hair so nice and shiny and sleek. It doesn't destroy the curl or blowout that I put in my hair that day. It adds shine, but it's not like a heavy shine. It doesn't feel greasy or oily. It just has like a perfect dry oil finish but it still leaves my hair feeling so nice and hydrated. And I only need to use this on the day I style my hair. I don't need to like really go in with it the following days. It like has really great longevity, but I can't believe my results from these products in such a short time. It's unbelievable actually. Now I have some body care things that I've been loving. So Youth to the People came out with a body care line and it's so nice. So these are the first things I received. It's the Superfood and Cedarwood Fresh Greens Elevated Self Hand and Body Lotion and the Hand Wash. I've never had like a bougie hand wash before. I usually just get whatever's on sale at the grocery store. The scent is glorious. It smells like a fresh forest with a little bit of sweetness. Um, whenever I wash my hands with this, it just refreshes me, it wakes me up, and it's just really nice and relaxing. It's such a good scent. Oh, I love it. Its scent is cedarwood, black pepper, and fresh greens. It's such a nice experience to wash your hands with this. And the bottle's really nice. It's glass, so it feels really nice and heavy, and it doesn't move around when you press the pump. Love that. Change from the cheap stuff from the grocery store. And the hand and body lotion is lovely. It's nice and lightweight, so it doesn't like feel too thick on, on your hands, or it's not too slippery. Same with on the body. It's awesome. They also have stuff for the shower. I haven't tried these products yet. This is the Hydrate and Glow Dream Body Butter, which I just have too many body lotions open right now, so I'm just going to leave this to try in a bit once I go through the things I already have open. And they also have this Smoothing Body Scrub, which may be competition to my First Aid Beauty um, KP Bump Eraser. But the body cleanser from this line, I think this is my new favorite body wash. Necessaire, I'm so sorry but I think you have some really good competition here. I get the Necessaire one in Eucalyptus, um, but this has kind of like a same, same, but different vibe to it. Again, this one smells like cedarwood, black pepper, and fresh greens. It just transports me to the woods in BC <laughs> or Alaska. It's so nice and crisp. And whenever I wash my body with this, it feels really soft and it doesn't feel like it overstrips me or leaves any residue behind like a lot of other body washes I've tried before. But this one also has niacinamide in it, which is one of my biggest reasons why I love the Necessaire one. So, so all that to say, I think I prefer the scent over just eucalyptus now. I like it. Rare Beauty also came out with a body care line. I haven't dabbled with all of the products yet, but I am loving the hand cream. It's the Find Comfort Hydrating Hand Cream. First of all, the packaging is so cute. That's what caught my eye to begin with. It looks, it almost makes me hungry. It reminds me of a little onigiri and it makes me want to eat one. Um, and it just is a perfect little shape to put in your bag. Um, you twist the top like this and then it comes out like so. I'm going to try to dodge my rings. I failed, I already failed. It has a good consistency for hand cream. It's not like too thick or slippy. Like you're not going to be completely unable to grab anything. Like things aren't just going to slip out of your hands. It soaks in really nicely and it just feels comfortable. The scent is really nice too. I'm not usually a fan of citrus scents, but the citrus is balanced with some really nice, deeper, kind of more musky, woody, relaxing scents. That's what I smell most. I think the citrus is kind of more in the opening and then it kind of dissipates for me. This is so nice to just have in your in your purse at all times. Let's discuss my fragrance favorites. So you may have seen this one floating in the background of my videos. It's Bianco Latte from Giardini di Toscana. I bought this online blindly because of Emma's descriptions of it. I love her TikTok. <laughs> um, she features this a lot on her TikTok. And whenever she would talk about it, it matched exactly what I was looking for in a perfume. Um, it smells gorgeous. It's kind of the perfect sweet caramelly vanilla-y rich scent. It's very popular online and for a good reason. So what I love about this one is how sweet and vanilla-y it is, but it also has so much warmth and comfort. I get so many compliments when I wear this 
out and about or just from my family and my friends. So if you love sweet scents with a lot of warmth and a little bit of musk, I think you'd love this perfume. I will say like I did order a little sample of it. It doesn't really smell the same in the sample, unfortunately. <laughs> it's pretty rude. It doesn't, when I smelt the sample, it had like a plasticky note. In the bottle, it doesn't have that plasticky note whatsoever. And also it's super powerful. I only need one spritz and it lasts on me all day. Like I can walk into my closet and it smells like Bianco Latte in there. It's just delicious and rich and warm and cozy and just, everything I wanted in a perfume. And I just love the packaging. I think this little cube is so cute. And there's another brand that has really impressed me and that's Dossier. So I was really intrigued by them because they kind of dupe very popular perfumes. And I love Le Labo Rose 31. This is one of my favorite fragrances ever. It's so nice and it reminds me of my growing up, I guess. This is what they have in the rooms at the Fairmont hotels. And I was really lucky as a kid, I was able to stay at a lot of Fairmonts because my mom was a travel agent and we'd have the travel agent right. So we'd be able to stay at all these beautiful resorts for like $60 a night. So this just has so many good memories. And I'm even luckier now because my brother actually works at the Fairmont. So I'm able to go for cheap all the time too. <laughs> but anyways, love this scent. Um, but she's so expensive. She's so expensive for me to run through it so much. And Dossier has a dupe and it smells exactly the same. I can't tell the difference whatsoever. It's the perfume in Floral Rose. I also love to spritz this on my bed to make it a hotel experience. So this is just way too expensive to be using it as a pillow spray. But with this, I'm like, a little bit more lenient. This one here is Ambery Cherry. I think it's a dupe for one of the Tom Ford Cherry um, perfumes. I forget the one. It's not popping up in my head at this very moment, but this one smells exactly like the Kayali Love Fest Burning Cherry 48 to me, but just a little bit more intense. And I actually kind of like this one better because whenever I wear this one, I have a sneeze attack. Like I sneeze constantly. So I've just stopped using it because I'm like, am I allergic to it? Is it just the atomizer that's so fine? It just goes way up into my nostrils or what's happening here? But I've been rotating through these two. I don't have their inspirations with me. So I don't know what those ones smell like or I can't really compare them for you, but I've just been really liking them on their own. This one is Musky Musk. This one's inspired by Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume. So it's just really fresh and barely there just smells like you just got out of the shower. It's like really nice and clean. Um, and this one, Ambery Saffron, which is inspired by MFK's Baccarat Rouge 540. Super expensive perfume. It says it retails for around $430, but this one is $69 and it just smells really nice and rich and warm. I actually like mixing these two. That's what I've been doing. A few spritzes of this, a few spritzes of that, and I'm very happy. They have really good wear too. Like I smelt some of the clothes I was wearing this week and they still smell like this combo. So I really wanted to mention those and I think they were nice enough to give me a discount code. I'll have it down in the description or on screen. I don't know if it's active still. So if you're seeing this clip right now, it's active. <laughs> You guys, I almost forgot to talk about this one. I have one straggler left. This is the First Aid Beauty 0.3% Retinol Complex Serum. This is the first retinol that I've been able to get along with. I've tried so many and they just wreck my skin. I My skin's just far too sensitive, I guess, or they're just not a good match. This one's so gentle and it's just been a seamless transition into using retinol. I started by using this once a week, now I'm up to twice a week. I think that's what's really helping to smooth out my complexion here. First Aid Beauty has got to be my favorite skincare brand. I owe a lot to them. You guys know how much of a journey my skin has been through the last few years. I was like full of acne um, like in 2020 and now I'm like pretty clear with a few random breakouts here and there, but it's all thanks to First Aid Beauty. Their ultra repair line is truly ultra repairing. <laughs> and I love them. But those are all of the things I've been loving this year so far. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I'll have all of these things I've been loving in the description box down below, so feel free to check them out, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!